Northern Ireland is on the cusp of a new beginning. In a historic election, the region has elected a nationalist leader for the first time. The Sinn Féin party has bugged the maximum number of seats. Before we tell you more, take a look at what the winning leader had to say. Today represents a very significant moment of change. It's a defining moment for our politics and for our people. Today ushers in a new era, which I believe presents us all with an opportunity to reimagine relationships in this society on the basis of fairness, on the basis of equality and on the basis of social justice. Irrespective of religious, political or social backgrounds, my commitment is to make politics work. My commitment is to work through partnership, not division. We will work with those who serve um, all other political perspectives. We will work together. We will show respect and we expect to be shown respect. Sinn Féin has won 27 seats, leaving behind pro-British party, which stood at 25 seats. Winning the most number of seats in the elections, Michelle O'Neill is all set to become the first minister, which is absolutely unprecedented for the Nationalist Party. Yet it is not all smooth sailing for the party, as it failed to gain a majority in the House. Circumstances where households and families are struggling to put bread on the table, struggling to heat their homes. This is not a time for theatrics. This is not a time for playing games. This is a time for grown-up, sensible partnership politics. That's what people want. And we look forward to an executive being established. I look forward to Michelle O'Neill being nominated as First Minister to lead from the front. This is historic for two reasons. One, since Northern Ireland was formed, a unionist party has held the most number of seats in the parliament. For 101 years, the Stormont has not been headed by anybody else. And reason number two, the new leader has vowed to bring a paradigm shift in policies. Sinn Féin is opposed to its region being part of the United Kingdom. The party deeply believes in favour of a united Ireland which means reunification of Northern Ireland and mainland Ireland. Here's a brief history about the party. Sinn Féin is the former political wing of the IRA, which stands for the Irish Republican Army. This is the same group that fought in the 1919 independence war. It was a bloody three-decade military campaign to end British rule. Today, the ideology has shifted from military resistance to a more social fight. But nevertheless, Irish republicanism remains the focus. Sinn Féin's victory will not change the region's status because a referendum is needed to leave the United Kingdom. And this is at the discretion of the British government and is most likely years away. But this does pose a challenge for the United Kingdom because the symbolic implications of Irish nationalist support is huge. Sinn Féin has sent a stark message to Boris Johnson's government that a referendum on a united Ireland was now on its agenda. The party saw ring popularity in the Republic of Ireland, where it leads the opposition in the Dublin Parliament, will add to number 10's alarm. And today's result will definitely start a conversation, not just in Stormont, but also in Britain, about how really united the United Kingdom is. And for more on this, journalist Alex Era is joining us live from London. Alex, thank you very much for making time and welcome to We On. Thank you. Glad to be here. I want you to start by simplifying to our viewers, what does Sinn Féin's win mean for Northern Ireland and also the United Kingdom? Well, I think in the short term, it doesn't mean a lot more than the fact that clearly the politics of Northern Ireland is changing. Uh, because as was pointed out in the prologue to this, uh, unionist parties have always held power in, Northern, uh, in Stormont up until now. Um, but I think in the long term, it is a worry for Downing Street because it does seem to indicate that Northern Ireland is shifting away from the United Kingdom. And it might not be something that will happen within the next 10 years or even the next 20 years. But the, I think the possibility of a United Ireland is closer than ever. Alex, let me ask you this. British response to Irish demands for full independence was devolution within the United Kingdom. But the Irish people are still dissatisfied and are still pushing for independence. 
Will the calls for a referendum sail through or will it be tough going forward? Uh, it will absolutely be very, very tough because as we, as we saw with uh, this, the push for a second Scottish referendum, the British government, particularly the Conservative Party, has, be, has absolutely refused to engage in that debate at all. So it's not going to be easy for Sinn Féin to try and get a referendum. Uh, but I don't think that that's going to be in Sinn Féin's priority right now. As I said, they've, uh, this is a long-term possibility, and Sinn Féin has been building very slowly, and I think that they'll continue to do so, and they'll, they'll bide their time and wait for the right opportunity to start pushing for a referendum. Finally, Alex, what does this election mean for the future of Ireland? Well, as I said, I think that the uh, the power of unionism is declining. You know, uh, uh, Northern Ireland voted to stay in the European Union by 56 to 44 in the Brexit referendum. There's a much more European identity in the island of Ireland than in England, for example. And I think that is probably what's driving the success of Sinn Féin more than any sort of Irish nationalism. So I think that both Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK are going in two different directions. Live from London, I've been talking to journalist Alex Era. Thank you very much for making time and for talking to We On today. Pleasure to be here. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.